Yes, yeah, starting this week on the Sportsbank Zone with the Cricket West Indies have an unassailable 2 0 lead in their three match T20 International Series against South Africa, following a 30 run win over the visitors in the second game at the Brian Lara Cricket Academy in Taruba, Trinidad and Tobago on Sunday. Sent to bat, the wind is posted 179 for six of their 20 overs, with Shea Hope leading the way with 41 from 22 deliveries. Captain Robin Powell added 35, while Lizard Williams took 3 for 36 for South Africa. Chasing 180 for victory, South Africa crunched 71 in the power play. Compliments of a top score of 44 from 18 balls from Reza Hendricks. They were seemingly on track to reach the target before 3 for 15 from player of the match Romaria Shepard and 3 for 31 from Shamar Joseph crippled their effort as they were dismissed for 149 with two balls to spare. Let's hear now from Shepard. Well, for me, first of all, you know, winning the series was very important because that was one goal for us. You know, my performance contributed to the series was, um, yeah, I'm happy also with that. So going forward, you know, it's time now for us to look, look to go to here. Yeah, Nikhil Utamton. Utam Chandani joins us to review what's happened in the series so far. Nikhil, welcome to the Sportsbank Zone. It's great to have you as usual. Two pretty impressive performances from the West Indies in the opening game, chasing and then yesterday setting a target and defending it really well. From your standpoint, what impressed you most about the Caribbean side in these first two T20 internationals? Yeah, Ricardo, I think it is a good series win. Um, but as Darren Sami has said, as we as a Caribbean people know, I don't know how much you can really take from a series win like this. Look, for me, the bigger picture is, is the World Cup. And Darren Sammy said he wants to become a tournament winning team. And let's not forget that this is South Africa side with a lot of inexperience, much like the West Indies. But it is foreign conditions for them. I think they're without a, a quality attacking spinner, which has been the West Indies and their Achilles heel in the past. So there are a few factors and variables which I think I don't want to look too deeply into the series in terms of just the 2-0. What I do look at and I'm impressed with is the way that they've reacted under pressure. So that 71 for two after the power play, the way that Shepard came in and finished the power play and then was able to come back in the middle and bowl. And I thought the way that as a collective unit, the bowling, they challenged themselves and were able to get back into the game. I think the West Indies of, of old or you know, on another day, maybe against a better batting lineup, they would not have been able to save a game like that where they had, I thought, a below par total and were still able to defend it even after being you know, under severe pressure. And I mean, South Africa... They should really have won that game. 76 off the last 10 overs with seven wickets in hand. I think they'll look back on that and say we missed a big opportunity. Yeah, and you know, you spoke about Romario Shepard. You mentioned him briefly. And I just want to spend some time talking about him, um, Nikhil, and how he was able to, of course, bounce back from the first T20 where he was very expensive. He was asked about it in the interview that, you know, we, sh we saw a clip from about bouncing back. And, you know, he said that, you know, you really can't just focus on that. You have to move forward and do what you have to do. But for me... Um, the concern I have and the question surrounds the fact that Ravman Powell continued to stick with him, believed in him despite, you know, that expensive over. Because from time to time, we notice like, you know, captains would, if you, if you mess up in one game, um, they would drop you or, you know, they would not have the same sort of confidence in you. Ravman Powell, you know, he believed in him, gave him the opportunity in the second T20 and he came up and he delivered. Yeah, the interesting thing about that was in the first game, he didn't bowl in the power play. In this game, it was funny because I think Robman used a few different options and they had all been expensive. So it was almost like he went to Shepard as a last resort. And funny enough, it ended up working out for Romario where he was then able to come in, as you see there in that over, and get Reza Hendricks dragged on. The thing about Romario Shepard, and if he can sort of clip up this bowling spell and keep it in the back of his mind, that length that he's hitting there, good length, the type of bowler that he is, especially on these West Indian pitches where you get that bit of skid and the type of bowler that he is, he always will challenge batters hitting above the knee roll because of the skiddy nature that he bowls with. So if he can find that length more consistently, and again, I think pressure is a big thing and has a part to play here. In the first C20 International, bowling at Stubbs, who was set, who was going after him, there would have been more pressure then. But if he can find that length, that will be the key. It's never been a skill thing for Shepard. We know he has those deliveries. But if he finds that good length more often and can be shorter, a bit less, I think then you get a much better bowler. And in terms of his batting, well, 
I think that speaks for itself into what of an asset he's become for the West Indies, as we saw with the six mm -hmm. in the last over yesterday. But this performance for me was the ceiling of what Romario Shepard can be, where he can bowl three in the middle, maybe give you one in the power player at the back end, but be a consistent good length bowler who can build pressure in the middle. Yeah, and another player that, you know, has continued to impress me, Akil Hussain. He's a player that I think every time he takes the ball, you expect him to deliver. And he's so calm, he's so cool, he's collective. It's as if, you know, that is expected, right? But I feel like time after time we need to mention, because he has really grown in the game. Saw him in the 100 final where he played, of course, in London. Uh, been watching him play very, very closely. And he's grown, he's grown to the... In, during the game um, to the point where he assumes a sort of leadership role, but it appears as if he leads from behind. He's not like, an, you don't really see him doing these things very outrightly, but he, I think with his performances accompanies that sort of leadership that I'm talking about. Have you noticed that? Yeah, he's definitely one of the leadership um, personalities on the field, I would say, because you always see him running to bowlers, discussing plans with Puran, even when he's not bowling. But the one thing I've enjoyed to see in terms of, and it's not only in this series, his development has come outside of just the power play where we know he's one of the best in the world. I like that they backed him in the middle yesterday. It was at the back end, and he was still able to sort of deliver and show us a different skill set. But I thought him and Morty bowling in tandem yesterday was a big moment for the West Indies. They bowled four overs towards the back end of the game. They went for 13 runs, and they took three wickets. That won the game for me uh, for the West Indies in the end. But the partnership and relationship that him and Moti are developing where they're constantly communicating, but they're able to bowl in tandem. Now, on another day where South Africa would have a David Miller in the side who's a left-hander, I don't know if you can potentially get away with bowling four overs in left-arm spin or maybe a Heinrich Klassen like we saw at the World Cup. But for what the West Indies had in front of them, I enjoyed the way that Moti and Hossein complemented each other um, and have enjoyed it in this series and even at times in the World Cup as well. Nikola, I want you to comment quickly on Rodman Power's leadership because in the past three decades, not many West Indies captains, if any, can boast uh, a win-loss record that is on the positive side. And he's at the moment doing that emphatically. What is it about Rodman Power's leadership that has his success rate, has that, you know, that explains his success rate? I think it's ability, Lance, to inspire individuals. Um, again, uh, the big telling point for me was when he won that 2022 CPL with the Talawas, a team who really didn't have the skill set or we thought didn't have the firepower of some of the other teams on paper. But the way he was able to sort of get guys into certain roles where they would be most effective, I thought that really stood out to me two years ago. What I think he's found now is the ability to be a bit more flexible. There were times, for example, Shamar Joseph pulled in the first T20I where he had a certain feel set and wanted Shamar to go to that plan. Yesterday, I saw a lot of conversation between him and his bowlers and Shamar Joseph specifically. And he, he seemed to have a bit more flexibility in wanting to give Joseph the feel that he wanted. And I think just backing guys into believing that they can actually execute and get the job done. And I mean, yes, we haven't gone and, and exceeded the expectations at the T20 World Cup, but we can't just look past what he's been able to do in series. I mean, yes, we'll look at this series and say, well, South Africa are weakened. But when the West Indies went to South Africa in 23, and, and we played a full-strength South Africa side and beat them there, or when we beat the likes of India or went to Australia and battled them, I thought you have to take those and put those wins into context. So definitely, he's a captain that's getting results. I think his batting has also come on at times. I think there's still room for improvement, obviously. But that extra bit of responsibility, I think, has helped his batting as well. But definitely, he deserves credit for the communication, but what he's been able to get out of some of the younger guys who have come into this West Indies side. Yeah, very much, Nickel. You know, I've been impressed with uh, Shea Hope for a little while now in this uh, T20 format of the game, definitely since he got his opportunity in the World Cup. And now, post-World Cup, we see him producing once again. Should we be discarding at this stage even the suggestion that Shea Hope is not comfortable at this T20 version of the game and can operate um, effectively for the West Indies at the top of the order? Yeah, I, I think that debate is past him, um, Ricardo, in terms of whether he's a T20 batter. He's shown enough. CPL last year, international cricket. And what I love as well, one thing I think he does amazingly that many in the world can't do is how he can just bat in different positions. So he's been a number three and number four for the West Indies for a couple of years. Now he's gone up to the top of the order and has still been able to find that high strike rate 
And also, I think he's picked his matchups well. Both games, he's taken apart Mark Rum, as you can see here. But the one thing I would say is I've been quite interested in the way he's constructed his innings because yesterday, and I understand the surface was a bit tough to start on. At least there was some moisture there, but he was a run about 13 and ended up, I think it was with 28 off his last nine or something where he struck out over 300. So can he potentially maximize a few more of those deliveries early on, especially when they're batting first? Maybe. But the fact that he's been able to strike at above 150 consistently, for me, that discussion about whether he's a T20 player or not is out the window. He's shown enough over the years. Yeah, you know, I think while you were on commentary yesterday, Nikhil, there was a line that you had that I think really sums up where Shea Hope has come from and where he is now. I think he hit a six somewhere over mid-wicket and you said so often he is class. That was pure power. Well, yes, I did say that, Ricardo, and it's great to hear that you were listening as well. I'm always listening, man. Well, I have a very important question to ask you, Nikhil, but I'm going to wait until the end of the series. I'll save it for now, and I'll give you the opportunity to think about what it might be. I'm sure Lance and Mariah will be thinking about what it might be as well. And then at the end of the series, please remind me to ask you that very important question. I'm very scared of your questions and surprises. You surprised me at Roston Chase uh, months ago before the World Cup. I'm petrified, but I will remind you for sure. All right. Have a great day, man. No, is he okay, staying with us for the woman? I, th I thought I'm staying, but oh, if you, yeah, want, you, you know you're you, the boss. You, so you, you are, sta leave, you are staying. You know what? Don't go anywhere. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about the women in the WCPL because there was another exciting match last night. It went to a super over and then a super woman came up trumps. We'll be back. Ha, ha, ha.